Okay, so what does zero degrees give us? Zero, 30. I'm sorry? 3.5. 45. 4. 60. 3.5. 90. 0. 120. Negative 3.5. 135. Negative 4. 150. Negative 3.5, 180, 0. How about we predict 210? Positive 3.5, 4, 3.5, 0. 0. Negative 3.5, negative 4, negative 3.5, 0. So in case you haven't learned at this point that trig always has a pattern, trig always has a pattern, okay? <laughs> It's always repeating. Trig functions are periodic. They're oscillating, so those numbers are just going to keep repeating each other. The pattern may change every once in a while, but there's always going to be a pattern when trig is involved. So, 0, 0. 30 is 3.5. 35 is 4. 3.5 and 0. So, we get this kind of loop or pedal looking thing here. 120 is this angle right here, but it has a negative radius, so that shoots us through to the other side. Same thing, another negative radius, another negative radius. Ooh, that's terribly unsymmetric. <clears throat> 210 is 3.5. 225 is... 4, 3.5. Wait, did I? I didn't go out far enough. That's what it is in the first quadrant. I didn't go out far enough. I was like, why? That one looks so different from the other ones. Oh, I can't count. 3. There we go. 3.5, 4, 3.5. That looks better. Okay. And then the fourth quadrant is actually going to map us into the second quadrant. Da, 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 da. It kind of looks like a flower. Um, we actually call these rose curves. Okay, and we can play around with these. We actually came up with some really interesting looking ones in uh, third period. But um, so when there's a constant in front and there's a constant multiplied by your angle, we're going to get a rose curve. If the number with the angle is even then your rose has two times n petals. So ours was two theta, so that's why we ended up with four petals right here. Um, if it's odd, then you have n petals. Uh, again, if it's with sine, it's going to be symmetric about the y-axis. Um, and if it's with cosine, it's going to be symmetric about the x-axis. Now, depending on whether A is positive or negative, it could kind of change the orientation there. Um, but here are just a few examples. Obviously, the bigger your N, the more petals you have. Um, and A is the length of the petal. Yep, you can have a lot. So we kind of started playing with it in third period, and we said, well, okay, what if we have, uh, I don't know, let's make it like eight cosine of 10 theta. Let's see what happens there. Okay, we should have 20 petals. So, there it goes. Kind of makes a snowflake looking kind of thing. Uh, it's kind of neat. Um, honestly, if you do 100, it doesn't really actually, because it starts repeating so much, um, it actually turns out kind of boring. That's all it'll grab if you do 100. Um, it's kind of interesting. There's kind of a limit to the number of petals that you can end up with. Um, let's change it to, let's make it a negative, let's say negative 5 sine. Um, just to look at maybe 11 theta and see how that orients. 11 may have been a little too many. Okay. Um, and there are limits to how detailed the graph will be. See how these don't really look like complete petals? It looks like it's missing some pieces. That's because your calculator doesn't graph in that much detail. Um, so it still, it should still be a completely full curve. Um, it's just because of the limitations of your calculator. Okay. 
We need some calculated for like 4K resolution or something. That'd be great. Um, they're probably working. Uh, probably not. But they should be. Make them better. They can graph better. They put 4K and everything else that doesn't really need 4K. So, you know. All right. Uh, last one. Now, the, the good thing about this last one is that the equation looks different from all the other equations. Notice this one is R squared. Okay, now 4 sine of 2 theta um, would make us think Rho's curve, right? Number in front, number with the angle, but because it's R squared, it's something different. Does yours not have a back page? Oh, okay. Well, then just mark out the squared on this one and add the squared to the other one. Okay. <clears throat> All right, so this time when you type in 4 sine of 2 times your angle, you need to take the square root of it. Take the square root of your answer before you give me the number, okay? Um, now, some of those numbers are negative, right? So when you take the square root, you can't take the square root, so tell me that it's undefined. Okay, if you get a negative, tell me it's undefined. <clears throat> All right, 30, what are we at? 1.5, 45, huh? Not 9.5? 1.9. 1.9. I don't know why I'm having such an issue of hearing you today, Kayla. I'm sorry. 45, 2, 60, 1.9, 90, 0, 120, undefined, 135, undefined, 150, undefined, 180, Zero, two ten. One point nine. I bet the next one's two, and I bet the next one's one point nine. And two seventy is zero. Our three hundreds, and again, I mentioned this. Uh, that should be three fifteen and three thirty, not three thirty and three forty five. Um, but I bet those are all undefined, are they not? I believe they are, because when you type them in, you get a negative. Can't take the square root of the negative, and then three sixty is zero. Okay, so what we've got here is zero, zero, 1.9, 2, 1.9, so we've got a pedal or a loop right there. Then we're undefined in the second quadrant, there's nothing to graph there. And then we get 1.9, 2, 1.9 in the third quadrant, and nothing in the fourth quadrant, because we're all undefined there. Okay? So it's like half of our rose curve. It's like half of our rose curve. These are called limnus states. Okay, these are called limnus states. So when there's an R squared in front, it's called a limnus state. And uh, notice how on my general equation here, it's got A squared. Okay, so ours was just four. So the length of the pedal is two. You take the square root of it to figure out the length of your pedal. Um, if it's sine, then it's going to be in like the first and the third, or uh, the second and the fourth. If it's cosine, it's going to be either on the x-axis or on the y-axis. Okay, and um, it's usually always, uh, well, it is always two theta. Okay, now we did actually play with this. I don't know that these are called uh, linear skates, but if we did, let's see here, and to graph this, since it's R squared, you would take the square root. Uh, let's say that it was 9 sine of, let's say it's 3 theta instead of 2 theta. Uh, this is what you get. It's just a really tiny, um, it, it looks like a rose curve. So I don't know that that's, Honestly, I don't know enough about polar to know whether that's still considered a limnus gate or not, just because it's squared, because I also changed the angle. Um, that'd be a cosine of pi theta. Uh, here's an example of, uh, oh, I know what I did. I did sine, I think I did sine of pi theta. Let me make this a bigger number. Let me make this 25. Oops. Sine of five theta. It looks like Patrick. <laughs> so, anyways, again, this is supposed to be complete loops. 
um, but it's just the limitations of your calculator. It doesn't graph everything. Um, somebody said, well, what if it's cubed? Uh, so I'm trying to remember what, what came out when we did that. But when we did cubed, oh, it just made it, it made it fatter, I think, when it was cubed. So, anyways, you can play around with these and, and look um, at what happens when you change different parts. But uh, long story short, these are the ones that you need to know. Uh, be familiar with the names of and be able to kind of recognize their equations. But again, the reality is you have your calculator. All you have to do is make sure that you are in A, degree mode, and B, in polar mode. And you can type in any equation that you want. You can get any values you need. Um, you can graph them, you can compare, whatever you need to do, okay? Um, so...